Okay, here we have the dorsal view of the human brain. You've already seen this in the sheep brain. You'll find that many things are similar, but not everything. The main difference between the sheep brain and the human brain, aside from its overall size, is going to be how much cortex we have. We have way more cortex than the sheep does, and as a result, we have a lot more sulci and gyri, as you can see. What that also means is that our folding, our sulci and gyri, don't necessarily match up with the ones present in the sheep, though there are some evolutionarily very old folds which do match up, as we'll see. So here on the dorsal view, this fold does match up, the longitudinal fissure, which separates the two hemispheres. And then this one's different. So in the sheep, you have the cruciate fissure separating the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. But in the human, you can see what you have instead is something called the central sulcus on the left and right hand sides, which is analogous to the cruciate in that it separates our enormous frontal lobes here from the parietal lobes. And you can also see that it, it doesn't cross the longitudinal fissure in a straight line the way the cruciate tends to, but rather it's at a bit of an angle. And again, anterior to the central sulcus is our enormous frontal lobes. We'll talk about the, the functional significance of the frontal lobes later in the semester. Caudal to the central sulcus, posterior to them, are the parietal lobes. Again, all the structures in the brain are bilateral. If you see something on the left, you'll find the same structure there on the right hemisphere, and that goes for the lobes as well. So the left frontal lobe is here, right frontal lobe here, left parietal, right parietal. And then finally, there's the occipital lobe in the back. So that's it for the lobes that you can see from the dorsal view. Now I'm going to show you two functional structures, two functionally defined areas of the brain. The first is the precentral gyrus. That's actually the name of the structure itself. The function of this area is the primary motor cortex. So this is the last part of the cortex that uh, it processes movement signals before those signals travel down to the spinal cord and control parts of the body. And then just caudal to the central sulcus is the postcentral gyrus, which is also primary somatosensory cortex. So this is the first part of cortex that gets input from the body about touch. So whenever you feel touch on different parts of the body, you'll actually get activity in different parts of primary somatosensory cortex here. You can see that primary somatosensory cortex is in the parietal lobe. I don't have it overlaid here, but this would be primary somatosensory cortex in the left hemisphere. It's at the anterior part of the parietal lobe. And then here, this would be the primary motor cortex in the right hemisphere. I don't have it highlighted, but again, if you see it on the left-hand side, you'll find it in the same spot on the right-hand side. Next up is the lateral view of the human brain. A lot of the structures are the same. As you can see, great big cerebral cortex here, much bigger than the sheep, cerebellum here. In the cerebral cortex, again, we don't have a cruciate fissure, but we do have this central sulcus. We also saw this on the dorsal view. It roughly cuts the cerebrum in half. So it's roughly halfway between the anterior and posterior parts of the cerebrum. And you can see it, it descends at kind of an angle, tilted anteriorly, until it meets the sulcus right here, which we'll name in a moment. All the cortex anterior to the central sulcus is the frontal lobe. The cortex posterior to it is the parietal lobe. This is a sulcus that we do share with the sheep. This is the sylvian fissure, also called the lateral sulcus or lateral fissure. And it separates the frontal and parietal lobes from the temporal lobe, this sort of lumpy sausage looking thing on the, the side of the brain here. And then finally you have the occipital lobe all the way in the back. It's difficult to find clear landmarks to show you where the occipital lobe ends and the parietal lobe begins. The actual landmark is on the medial wall of the cerebral hemisphere, so you can't see it, but it's right about here. And then the other landmark is right here. It's called the preoccipital notch. 
So you draw a line between those two. Some people follow this sulcus. Uh, the sulcus isn't always in the same spot, uh, but generally speaking, it's about here. Next up is the cerebellum, important for coordinating movements, the pons, and the medulla, and the spinal cord. Next up, I'm going to show you some more functionally defined areas, two of which you've already seen. One is the precentral gyrus, right here, which is also primary motor cortex. So this is, again, the, the last part of cortex that's crucial for controlling movements. Signals from here get carried down axons into the brainstem, spinal cord, and out to the body. And then just behind the central sulcus, just caudal to it, is the post-central gyrus, which is also primary somatosensory cortex, the first part of cortex that gets input about touch from the body. The most posterior part of the occipital lobe contains primary visual cortex. It actually extends pretty far onto the medial wall, as we'll see later. And this is the first part of cortex that starts processing information about vision information from the eyes. Here on the superior temporal lobe is primary auditory cortex, the first part of cortex that gets input from the ears. It actually extends into the sylvian fissure, the fairways. And then Wernicke's area, right here. This is an area that we'll learn about at the end of the semester. This area of the brain is crucial for language processing. And over here is Broca's area, another important area for language production. 